This is a special video on our photosynthesis series. Um, it's not actually technically part of the lecture series, but um, those of you who are interested in finding out how the C4 carbon cycle work and learning a little more about the actual adaptations that are involved in those C4 and camp plants, I just wanted to spend some time talking about it. But basically, the way this works is that in the C4 carbon fixation, instead of the well, the light reactions still happen the same way, and they will happen in the mesophyll cells, but the energy produced during, the, during the, that reaction, a completely different process, will actually capture carbon dioxide. The whole problem with photorespiration is that when there's too much light intensity, too much heat, and too little water, your bisco has a higher tendency to pick up oxygen than carbon dioxide than normal. It can always pick up both, and, it, and the cell is able to deal with that. Uh, in most cases. But when the temperatures go high and the intensity goes too high and the water is too low, photorespiration becomes so common if you use the standard carbon cycle through Rubisco that you got a problem. So to avoid that, the C4 plants don't use Rubisco and that's what all this is all about. The adaptation is avoiding the use of Rubisco at least in in the mesophyll cell. So that's I'm going to show you how it basically works. Basically the, the cells in the mesophyll, um, there's a molecule called phosphorinol pyruvate, which is PEP. And this molecule has an affinity for carbon dioxide that's really strong, way more than Rubisco. And so it will trap a carbon dioxide from the air, just like Rubisco does, and become oxaloacetate, which is a four carbon molecule. Now that four carbon molecule will then be converted through metabolic process into an acid called malate. All right? Now... As soon as this malate is, is created, all right, the um, it goes, it gets transferred through the plasma that's matter, which are holes in the in the, in the cell membrane and and uh, cell walls of plants, and put into the bundle sheet cells which surround the veins of the uh, of the plant, and then in the bundle sheet cell, the malate will be decarboxylized, which means uh, enzymes will remove one carbon at a time for the malate, okay, and then to convert it back to pyruvate, which will then travel back into the mesophyll cell to be recharged through ATP into PEP and restart the cycle. Meanwhile, that carbon dioxide that was um, released from malate as it converted into pyruvate is actually going to undergo a regular Rubisco oriented. Um, carbon fixation through the carbon cycle and everything else from that on is going to be the same. But what you've done here is that you've separated the carbon dioxide entering the carbon cycle through Rubisco from the place where oxygen is hanging out which is in the mesophyll cell because it's produced during, uh, during the light reaction so it's full of oxygen. So by separating the Rubisco from the oxygen what you're actually doing is you are, is you are allowing that oxygen to escape to the air instead of being trapped by the rubisco, so you actually lower the incidence of, of photorespiration. No matter if you are in a hot, high intensity light environment with low humidity, so this actually allows the plants by doing a spatial separation of where the cycle is happening to avoid this process. Just one more thing. Um, the PEP can only uh, react with carbon dioxide if the carbon dioxide is an aqueous environment uh, where it forms a carboxylic acid. Remember, we talked about that. But this is all normally ha will happen anyways um, in, in the cell because the carbon dioxide combines with the water from the cytoplasm but remember, of the cells. Now, remember, all this is happening actually inside the stroma of the, chlor of the chloroplast but in or inside the cytoplasm of, of the cell. Okay? So this is the C4 version of the cycle. Now, if you are actually um, doing this, you are doing what, what I mentioned on the previous slide. You are doing a spatial separation of the cycle where the organic capturing of carbon dioxide is actually separate from the carbon cycle. It happens in two separate cells. The uh, mesophyll cells, where the oxygen is also being produced, are here. But the oxygen is leaks out and then here's where the carbon cycle is happening so that creates separation that solves the problem now on camp plants not only will they, they do all of that so they do that C4 thing so they're not not only are they doing everything that 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 the other plants are doing but 
they are also only opening the stomata to capture capture carbon dioxide from the air during the night. Which basically what that means is that the the water will not leak out. So instead of the water leaking out through the stomata, um, the the water will be preserved. So basically the 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 carbon dioxide production will uh, sorry the carbon dioxide consumption will not come at the expense of water loss through the stomata because during the night the temperatures are typically lower and there's less evaporation. So can plants detect daylight and close the stomata during the day? Which means they perform the light reactions during the day and the and the and the organic cycle and Calvin cycle during the night. Uh, they actually can perform the Calvin cycle during the night since the carbon has already been fixated into the malate. So they can do that during the day as well. But the fixation itself, which actually is happening through the um, PAP cycle of the the variation, the C4 cycle, only happens during the night. So think of it this way. The regular plants, 85% of, of life on Earth is the C3 plant, uh, which is most plants that can't deal with those environments which are too humid, too light intensity. No, sorry, not humid enough, too, too much light intensity and heat. Then you have 15% of the plant who can deal with these environments, like the the yeast, the yeast, wheat, and um, and sugarcane, for example. And then you have the plants which survive in really, really hot environments, and they conserve water by only doing fixation during the night and keeping the stomata closed during the day, such as pineapples and cactus. And these are usually going to be spiny plants, okay, with very, very waxy protection layers to protect them from water loss. So. I hope you understand these adaptations a little bit better now, and um, hopefully this will be helpful.